teach and he asks me questions. I'm like, man, I never thought of that. You're so awesome. So I was preparing, you know, the prophetic training notes and revamping it because I've taught this, you know, different places and online and, and asking. He said, let me ask you this, April. He said, how much of the word do you think is prophecy? How much of the Bible? I'm like, wow, that's a good question. Let me go. Let me ponder that. You know, and I, I was getting in my head, and I'm like, okay, let me Google this. I don't know why I just didn't ask him to tell me right away. I mean, <laughs> that would have just been easier. So I'm like Googling it and, and checking it out. So 27%, according to the Encyclopedia of Biblical Prophecy, says that the written word is 27%. And I looked it up to see if different websites. So the average 25 to 28%, but how many, that's one-fourth. Is prophecy. So Holy Spirit just reminded me how important is prophecy in the word, how important it is to the heart of God if it's in his written word. Um, I just thought it was really cool that he drew my attention to that. And uh, when we were repenting before, just for the verse reference, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 20 through 21 says, Do not despise prophecy. Test all things and hold fast to what is good. So one of the things we're going to go over in this class is how to test prophecy, you know, how to flush it, how to know if it's from God or not, somebody's soul or not. Um, so you'll get more comfortable with testing your own words and not just receiving everything that you hear. But I want to just see where we're at as a, as a church body. By a show of hands, how many have released a prophetic word before? And if you haven't, that's okay because I'm going to be going over the basis of it. So we got some people that haven't. That's great. I love that. Um, how many of you would prophesy, would say you prophesy on a regular basis? Anybody? Anybody? Okay. Um, so we got some brand new people. That's exciting. So we're going to lay a foundation to get you comfortable today. So wherever you're at, we're going to challenge you to grow in what God has for you and take you to the next level. Um, <laughs> I just can't start talking about prophecy without saying that the spirit of prophecy, Revelation 19.10, that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So we have to honor that. So a lot of you prophesied and didn't even know it. Have you shared your testimony of Jesus Christ? So yeah, you have prophesied and didn't even know it. So I just wanted to say that any time that you tell your story, you tell what Jesus has done in your life, you're prophesying to the people around you. So you go, you tell your family member, you tell somebody in the market, you're releasing the spirit of prophecy in that atmosphere because it gives people hope. So Jesus Christ's testimony is the spirit of prophecy. So if you've been healed, share it. If you've been had a money come out of nowhere, share it because you're prophesying and you're allowing the spirit of prophecy to be stirred up into your atmosphere, which can flow into other gifts. We thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. How many in, in this room have ever been confused on what the gift of prophecy is? You can be honest. Okay. A few of you. Okay. And how many have been confused on what the gift of prophecy is versus the office of a prophet? Yeah. A couple of them. All right. So we're going to go over some of that. Um, I just want to take you to 1 Corinthians 14. 1. It says, Pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts but especially that you may prophesy. So in this verse, it's saying we are encouraged to prophesy, especially that you may prophesy. How many know that earnestly is a pretty big word? <laughs> so what does earnestly mean? Have you ever thought about what earnestly prophesy means? I'll tell you, the Oxford Dic Dictionary states it to be at a place with sincere and intense conviction. Seriously. I'll read that one more time. So it says, pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. So earnestly prophesy with sincere and intense conviction. How many know that in season and out of season, God can bring a word to you that will shift your life and you reap what you sow? <laughs> you want some good prophetic words? How many have you sown? <laughs> It challenges us to be a place of encouragement because how many doesn't enjoy when God releases the prophetic word to us and it shifts us into a place of hope and joy? You know, it's like that ironing, sharpening iron to the body, you know. So I want to just clarify 
any confusion right now with the prophetic gifts and what the office of a prophet is because some of you may already know your prophet we will do some training for prophets later but I just want clarification because I don't want any confusion about this gift so we're going to read just a few scriptures um, turn to 1 Corinthians 12 and go down to verse 4 <laughs> So I'll just start reading this to you about the gift of prophecy. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For one to be given is the word of wisdom through the spirit to another, the word of knowledge through the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, and to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. So right here we recognize that a prophecy gift, right now we're defining the prophecy gift if you want to take notes. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. Every believer is exhorted to prophesy. Prophecy is for edification, exhortation, allows us to build others up and bring comfort. It is a prophetic ability that is a gift. You don't earn it. You don't have to perform base to get it. You just flow with the Holy Spirit. And anybody and everybody can do this. And it's a gift for life. You just get filled with the Spirit and you start prophesying. <laughs> get out of your head and just release what the Lord has for you. Now the reason I want to cover um, what a prophet is, is because you might find yourself in a place where God has spoke to you about being a prophet in your silent um, time with the Lord. But it takes a lot of prophets say 10 years to start operating in, in the office of a prophet. Training, equipping, getting ready, preparing. So some of you guys, um, I want you to be able to tell if this is a place where you find yourself at. And then we'll um, go into more about prophet training later on. But I just want you to know, um, 1 Corinthians, let's turn to 12, 27. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually, and God has appointed these in the church. First apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, the gift of healing, helps, administration, and variety of tongues. So whereas prophecy is a gift of the Holy Spirit, uh, right here it says that God, Jesus Christ, th the prophet is the gift to the body. It is the gift. God chooses a prophet. It's not their choice. God chooses that individual right here according to 1 Corinthians 12, 27. He appoints the prophets. A prophet is to govern people and nations. A lot of times if you find yourself in um, the training or you notice that God has spoke to you about being a prophet, a lot of your warnings um, will come through the office of the prophet. You correct, you warn, you equip. So it's not just a gift of prophesying over somebody. Um, if you find yourself getting more c corrective words or warning words, you might say, God, is there something going on here? You know, did God call me to the office of the prophet? Have a conversation about that. Um, I've just found people have been confused when they've got warning words because they've always taught the, on the prophetic gift and they didn't know what to do with them. And I've seen great harm come. So that's why I like to touch base. If you are in the office of a prophet, you will get warning words, and we will do training on how to handle the warning words later on. Um, a prophet also has authority or a place of influence, and it's a calling for life. And they're usually strange, maybe a little, maybe a little weird, maybe a little challenging. They irritate the culture because that's what they were desired by God to do. <laughs> So if you've been through that, it's possible that may, may, God may have called you by the office of a prophet. But at some point, you will be publicly called out as the Lord sees fit. 
But I just like to say Holy Spirit has a high value on the prophetic unction as well as the person called to the office of prophet. It takes both. One's not more important than the other. We need the body pro prophetically releasing their unction to one another to stir up their gift, to help um, build one another up. How many know trials happen, life happens. Sometimes it takes a stranger to come prophesy to a situation because it's a sword in God's hand that shifts you. How many have ever been through something really tough and you got an awesome prophetic word? Anybody been through that? Yay. That's good. I like to see that side of things too. <laughs> uh, highly prophetic people partner with the Holy Spirit to steward the gift. The more you use it, the more you will grow. And you may feel like, man, I just noticed everything. Like I'm just wired differently. I had to overcome rejection. Well, maybe you're very prophetic. Maybe you're more sensitive. You might be more emotional if you're prophetic. How many have ever felt like that? <laughs> so there's a process of overcoming emotions and, and not allowing our emotions to overtake us as being a prophetic person. And just one of the things I love to do some days, how many know, you know, us women, we may be a little bit more emotional than some guys. So we have to talk to our emotions as a prophetic person and say, I surrender my will, my mind, and my emotions to God. And just call your emotions into alignment, you know, because how many times have people been in here been tempted by rejection? That's the number one thing prophets and prophetic people have to overcome is rejection. So we have to prophesy acceptance to ourselves. Sometimes, you know, we need to prophesy to ourselves, right? <laughs> Keep us going. But hopefully this gives you more clarity on um, what the difference is in the prophetic and the office of the prophets. Prophetic people often will get words of knowledge and words of wisdom for people. So we'll go into a little bit about um, you maybe get words of knowledge and didn't even know it and what that means in just a little bit. However, prophets will often see and activate other people's calling, equip, intercede, and speak on behalf of people and nations, promote growth in believers, bring you unity and maturity. They give warnings and prophesy future events. So if you're starting to have warning dreams, write them down. God may be calling you. Write them down. I, I just sent some people under the sound of my voice. You've been getting warning dreams and this is all new to you, and maybe God is showing you what he's created you for in this time and activating you. So how many know that there are three parts to a prophetic word? Has anybody ever heard any of that before? Okay, this will really help you then. Um, how many in this room, I'd like to ask this question, know that we have spiritual senses the same way we have supernatural senses? A few of you have heard that before? Okay. So let's start doing some practice to grow in our spiritual senses before we start prophesying to one another. Because I could speak all day on the prophetic, but if I don't activate you, you won't grow. <laughs> It'll become head knowledge, and head knowledge puffs up, right? So we want to help activate your spiritual senses because according to Ephesians 2, 6, Christ raised us up together, that we're seated in heavenly places. How many know that we're in both realms However you'd like to word that. You're seated in heavenly places. So what we're doing here is we're putting demand on that scripture. We're saying, okay, if I'm seated in heavenly places, then I need to be having spiritual eyes, spiritual ears, spiritual smell, taste, touch. And so that's what we're going to activate. Um, so let's just do a cleansing. Thank God, Christine. Praise God. She did some cleansing last night with your spiritual senses. But I know we have some new people here. So let's just surrender our senses to God. I'm just going to leave you in a quick prayer for that. Just say, Lord, I ask you to cleanse off my spiritual senses from all the iniquity in my bloodline. On behalf of my mother's and father's side, especially all trauma off my eye gates, ear gates, touch, and all my senses. I surrender my senses to you, Lord, and I thank you, God, that you would activate them and make me more sensitive today in Jesus name all right 
We're going to first talk about spiritual sight. According to Ephesians 1.18, we see with the eyes of our heart. So we're going to do some activation practices for spiritual sight. It's seeing things in the spirit realm with the eyes of understanding. So you could almost describe it. The best way I know how to describe it is that God created your imagination. So when you see pictures, it's usually a faint impression in your mind for a person when you're prophesying. So we're activating your spiritual eyes. So I'm going to have you um, get into groups, try to do two people um, to practice these spiritual senses. So go ahead and move wherever you want to move. Pick whatever partner you want to pick because we want to make sure that as we activate your spiritual senses that you'll be um, side by side for the prophecy activations. So I might have to get some of y'all yeah, to move, to get out of your chair, and pick a partner. <laughs> get past all the fear of man. We just break that off of you right now. <laughs> Do it in two. Yeah, just it would be easier unless we have an odd number and then we'll work it out. Yeah, if, if you're husband and wife, it might be good to switch it up. Yeah, you know too much about each other. <laughs> Who else do we need a partner? Everybody? Yeah, that's fine. If you want, if you want somebody new, switch it up. You know too much about each other? Uh, I was going to say, there you go. That'll work. Yeah, yeah. Odd number. Well, Richard, do you want to do it with Jody? Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes, what we're going to practice Absolutely. We haven't gotten that far yet. We're just, so uh, start numbering yourself one and two. Just say, one of you pick one, one of you pick two. All right. Now that everybody's got a number, what we're going to practice, this is activation time. We're going to start right off the bat. Okay. I want you to ask the Lord to give you a color for the other person. Person one's going to start. And we're going to activate your spiritual sight. So I want you to sit there and ask the Lord for a color for the other person. And then ask one thing about it that the Lord wants to reveal to you. And each partner will take about five minutes, three minutes. I don't want to rush you too fast. But each partner release a color and one word with spiritual sight. And if you're used to prophesying, don't just flow into... And uh, we'll go into more a knobby flow where it just bubbles up. I want you to use your spiritual sight this time. Any color and one thing. Ready, set, go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You just ask the Lord to give you a color for her and just one thing about that color. We're just, we're priming the pump to get ready to prophesy. Okay. Um, you pick a color for, that you see over her that the Lord is highlighting. Okay. Any word that the Lord gives you for that person. Doesn't have to be, yeah, anything specific. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for each other. And I'll just keep track of when everybody's activated. And if you have trouble, let us know. Let us know.
got about one more minute. One more minute. And y'all are doing really good with this. Woohoo! <laughs> I see you guys flowing already. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right, all right, everybody. I'll give you the last few seconds to wrap it up. <laughs> and then I'll give an example of my own life. The main thing I want you to get here is God speaks to you through vision. You always think, God's got to speak to my ears. No, he's speaking to you with a picture. Any time of the day, any night, God, you're praying, you want to answer, you want to answer? What did he put in front of your eyes? What's your spiritual senses? So I'll just give you an example of my own life. I was driving down the road asking the Lord, what do you want me to do in this season? He showed a picture of me doing webinars. So guess what I did? I did webinars. He didn't speak it to me through the ear. He spoke through my eye gates. So just realize you hear from God all the time. How many found that pretty easy? No? How many found that hard? All right. That's what we're here for. We're going to keep activating you. We're going to keep practicing. You're in a safe place to practice. Um, now we're going <laughs> to, I love this one, we're going to activate smell. We're going to ask God to give you a scent for that other person and what it means. And so let me give you an example. There are supernatural smells of heaven that are awesome. Some of you may smell something nasty. I've smelt both. <laughs> God speaks to me through my nose. The scriptures are like Hosea 14, 6. He shoots, his shoots will sprout up and his beauty will be like the olive tree and his fragrance like the cedars of Lebanon. So you can smell heavenly things. Um, Psalms 81, 16, sometimes I'll smell honey and I know the Lord's communicating to me, you have revelation. I'm trying to give you revelation. Stop and smell this. I've also smelled ungodly smells. I can smell the spirit of nicotine. I don't know. I can just smell it, like a, the spirit of it. People can smell like rotten flesh as cancer. Sometimes you'll be in a room and you'll smell it. So learn to discern your smells. But hopefully on this exercise, let's release a positive smell over your partner. <laughs> if you get some rotten ones, take that to your prayer life, okay? So let's just ask the Lord. We'll take five minutes and just ask the Lord. Don't put pressure on yourself and just ask him for a smell and one thing that it meets for your partner. So number two, go first this time. Number two. We just thank you, Lord, for the activation of the sense of smell right now of heavenly things. Thank you, God.
We've got about one more minute. All right, all right, we'll move on. How many smelt something for the first time? But you smelt something, hallelujah, <laughs> praise God. So we just want you to realize from this activation, before we get deeper into prophetic activations, we want to get your senses so when you get a word, like you're walking down the aisle of the grocery store and you smell something, stop, ask Holy Spirit. How many have ever been the one that said, I know y'all have done this. This is so funny. I've seen this in the prophetic so many times. Well, Lord, if this person walks beside me at this specific time, then I'll prophesy over them. But if they don't come right up to me and make eight circles around me, then I'm not going to prophesy to them. <laughs> How many know that God's bigger than that and that you carry heaven and that you're going to smell and you're going to be more sensitive after this class so you're not going to say they got to jump through the hoops because you're bringing the kingdom to them and you're going to shift their life with the word that you're going to give them. So we're going to be in confidence as we grow in this, right? How many found the smell easy? A little bit more challenging? That's all right. Keep practicing it. Keep practicing. Start practicing with your friends. You know, this is something you can do at home too with your family. All right. The third activation we're going to do, you have spiritual taste buds. Taste and see the Lord is good. Sometimes you'll taste cake. Sometimes you could be reading your Bible and the Lord is telling, and you're like, why am I tasting meat in my mouth? The Lord is telling you, I'm giving you my meat. I'm giving you the meat of my word in this season. So we want to activate your spiritual sense of taste. So this time I want you to practice. Lord, just give me a taste. Whatever, whatever you want to show me about the other person Give me a taste of what you're doing in their life in this season. See if you can step it up just a little bit. What are you doing with the taste? And what are you doing with their life in this season that represents this taste? We'll take about five minutes. And person one, go first this time. Just thank you, Lord, that they taste the taste of heaven. Thank you, God. You're activating their taste buds.
I see you guys flowing. Yeah, I don't want to interrupt now, huh? Now you're hungry. <laughs> that's yeah, that's that's perfect time. Yeah, lunchtime, lunchtime. So how many understand that we've done that activation? It's the first time you've tasted anything spiritually. Anybody? Yeah. Oh yay, we got some more activation. So next time you taste something and you're not sure why, what are we gonna do? Holy Spirit. What are you saying to me or the person around me? It might not be for you. So I'm excited to see what God is doing. Y'all are doing really well with these. Um, now we're going to do hearing, which is realize when well, you just heard God. Just say that to yourself. I just heard God through my sight, through my smell, through my taste. And now we're going to go for the ears, which is more common. But you just heard God three different ways. That's exciting. Yay. So hearing, there are sounds of heaven, there's God's voice, there's Holy Spirit's voice. The Lord may want to talk to you. You may hear angels singing. Um, you may hear demons. If, you, if you're if you sensitive to that realm, you may hear angels speaking. There's many scriptures where there's stories where angels spoke to the people in the word. Also in Hebrews 1.7, it says, He makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. Fire. So I just want to give an example of, because a lot of times they don't talk about angels in church, but it should be very common. <laughs> I mean, they're with us. They're here now. They're always with us. So one time I was in church and I heard in a different realm, I heard in the heavenlies and an angel tapped me on the shoulder and said, I'm here for your breakthrough. And I felt the wind behind my back. He was just tapping me on the shoulder. But I want you to ask the Lord what does he want you to hear to encourage the person in front of you for this season? I want the second person to go first this time. What does he want you to hear? Because we're allowing you to, number one, exhort and comfort, but allowing you to hear. There's no restrictions. Whatever area it is, whether it's ministry, family, the area that God wants to speak to them about right now. Instructions again? Just listen to hearing what God wants you to encourage to speak into their life. Uh, we'll go more about three, the different layers of the prophetic, but I want you to just practice hearing, if it, even if it's one sentence, just what does God want you to speak to encourage the person in front of you? With your ear gates. It's a safe place to practice. So, Lord, I just thank you for activating their ear gates right now. Sometimes you just got to get out of your head and just let it flow.
just so excited. the Holy Spirit in this place. About one more minute. All right, all right. How many felt encouraged by what they heard, what the Lord gave them? Yes, I see the Holy Spirit minister to quite a few of you. <laughs> That's exciting. Hallelujah. Now, the last one is an activation for touch. You may feel and discern things spiritually. An example is Daniel ten eighteen. Then they came and touched me, the appearance of man, and strengthened me. Jeremiah 1, 9, God touched Jeremiah's mouth. An example would be, this kind of flows into words of knowledge and prophetic together because it's hard to separate. Um, all the gifts kind of flow together. So in the area of touch, like an angel touched my shoulder when I told you in that first um, story. So we just want to ask, um, I just want this one to be an activation between you and Jesus. Say, Jesus, where does the person in front of me need a touch from you and just see if you feel something like the Lord touching you on your hip. So this kind of goes into the word of knowledge, the Lord touching you on your heart. Just ask the Lord, where does the person in front of me need a touch from the Lord? And I want the second person to go first. <laughs> we'll take about five minutes. So Lord, we just thank you for activating touch that you touch, that Jesus just touched you on that part of your body that the other person needs a breakthrough. It could be healing, it could be anything.
about one more minute. So we just let her pray for that healing, yeah. If God gives you a physical touch for that person, just let them pray. Yeah. All right, everybody's flowing really well. <laughs> I see you going and going and going. That's exciting. How many t felt touch from Jesus the first time to release for over somebody else's life? There you go. That's exciting. So you, we're priming the pump to have you prophesy. I know we've had you prophesy in some, but we're, we're activating each one of your spiritual senses. So when you go to prophesy, it could be a smell, a taste, a touch, a picture, a uh, infirmity the lord is touched with our infirmities you, god may heighten this when you go to prophesy like i see the lord is healing your back you could feel the lord is healing your back and go pray for healing so we've activated all of the spiritual senses so now you get to go back and switch into teaching mode for a minute and get a, a break for a second of prophesying to each other but stay there because we're going to go and do more activations but now that your spiritual senses are activating, I want you to understand the three parts of a prophetic word. And if you're taking notes, um, this will help you to understand. Yeah, just put it in your phone. I know. Who carries the notepad anymore, right? <laughs> we have notes in our iPhones, right? <laughs> I was going to say, not very many people. Uh. So we've done all the different spiritual activations. So I just want to share to you what are the three parts of a prophetic word. The first part is revelation. Revelation. That's simply what is God saying with the prophetic word. Revelation, number one. It's an unknown fact or situation, picture, taste, smell, hearing. What is God revealing to you about any situation or person? nation, whatever your prophetic gift is, is unctioning under, it is what is God saying? What's the revelation that God has given me for this person? Number two is the interpretation. Ask God to reveal to you what does the revelation mean? Okay, you're showing me, let's just say you see a dog and you're getting ready to prophesy and they just lost a dog, and you didn't know that. So you say, God, what does this mean? And he, he, he wants you to, to prophesy. The Lord has seen your pain. He's here to comfort you. You know, you never know what it is. No words too big and no words too small. That's one of the things I've learned in. Um, <laughs> how about let's just share a time I failed in the prophetic. How many like, like the real scenarios, you know? So I was in a restaurant one time, and an, it came to me so fast, and I was growing in the prophetic, and I was like, man, that couldn't have been from God. It came too fast. Like, I didn't even have time to look at my menu. And because I, I would, when I was a student, I would go prophesy in Walmart. I would go prophesy. If you want to grow in prophecy, prophesy everywhere you go, once a day, no matter where it is, gas station, doesn't matter where it is. So I went in the restaurant and I sat down 
and I heard something to the effect of, um, the Lord knows you lost a loved one. And I'm like, you know, I'm on a date night with my husband. I'm like trying to switch this stuff off. I'm like, oh God, I'm trying to pay attention to my husband and I'm hearing this and I start eating and then I get up and I start walking out of the restaurant and I hadn't shared the word yet, you know. I was like, man, God, I'm trying to pay attention to my husband and I walk out to my car and I'm walking to get in the seat and I felt the heart of the Holy Spirit start crying. I'm like, oh, man, that was a word. I should have done that. I got in the car, and uh, I'm like, you know what? Um, I think I had a word, babe, and it was our date, and I should have released it because normally we do. And I said, it just came to me so fast I wasn't sure. You know, all I heard was um, something about they've lost a loved one. And then the Holy Spirit spoke to my husband, and he said, yeah, I was testing April to see if she would be obedient. And I was like, oh, man. And I said, true story, true story. I mean, this is in the beginning stages. And so what did I do? I'm like, I'm not failing my test. I'm going to call that restaurant. I'm going to ask for the name of that waiter, and I'm going to prophesy. I redeemed it. I just said, okay, sink or swim. I'm calling that lady. If I miss it, I miss it. And I called her. Somebody had died close to her. And I just, as soon as I opened my mouth, God filled it. And I released that prophetic word, and she started crying on the phone. And she said, I'm so thankful that you came in the restaurant and that you were obedient to call back because I wanted to know that God still loved me in, in the midst of losing somebody. So you don't know how big or how small. There's many success stories, but we need to share in the growing process. You know, there was times in the supernatural school we had to fill out, you know, who did we go prophesy and what did we go do? And God would give me a name, and that was it. And then I'd have to go walk up to a stranger and say, is your name blah, 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 Daniel, whatever it is. They're like, yeah, and I had no idea what I was going to say, but guess what? God met me in risk. And the prophetic, if you want to grow, you have to risk. And if it doesn't make sense to them, all it did was kill your pride. I mean, how many, how many, it's nice to kill your pride. Are you trying to share something funny? Yeah, I want to, I want to give you a little bit more, uh, info that at the restaurant there so the lord holy spirit was already speaking to me about it and april's going back and forth back and forth the lord said you're forbidden to tell her right now what you see you cannot tell her this is her <laughs> test so as her husband i'm like okay lord i obey you so that's right as we got in and everything we're driving down the road and she says i think i should have given that word i said yeah you should have you failed i said matter of fact here's the deal the first time when I did this, I filled my test, and I felt bad. I went home, and I wept. I said, God, for, please forgive me. Yeah. You had a message for that person, and I didn't deliver the word of encouragement to them. And my wife looked at me and said, I'm going to look up that restaurant. What's that restaurant called again? I said, oh, no, you can't cheat like this. You cannot do this. She goes, oh, yes, I am. And she called back. There's a lady there with the black hair and all this other stuff. I want to talk to her. So that's the rest of the story of that. Yes. Yes. I said, well, I may have been slow on my test, but I'm not failing it. <laughs> but I'm just telling you, this stuff matters. You just don't know how much it matters. And the more you do it, you get the revelation. The revelation was she lost somebody. Did I keep pressing in for the interpretation? No. I wanted to be on a date with my husband, and I was tired. Let's be real. <laughs> but guess when the prophetic words hit you? When you're tired. <laughs> when it's inconvenient. When somebody else needs to hear from the Lord, and they're like, um, I need to hear from the Lord. So deep inside, they want that word that you're carrying, no matter what you're walking through. But the third part is application. What do we do with the prophetic word once we know what it means? And this is where it takes time and effort to grow in the prophetic to usually get the application. It'll just say, let's say you saw a business for somebody. What is the application of the revelation, interpretation, and what can they do practically to apply that word you just gave them? Because you can get a bunch of prophetic words, but if you don't step out on any of them, they're not going to come to pass. You have to partner with the prophetic words. The prophetic words that you get today, you've got to partner and do something about it. And it takes time sometimes to grow in the application, but we still have to start and just press in with Holy Spirit and ask him, Holy Spirit, what's the application? Sometimes you just need two more minutes. And people make mistakes in interpretation and application, but how many know we're human? That's going to happen. I've seen well-known prophets miss it. That doesn't make you a false prophet. That just means you're growing. 
False prophets are like what Christine was talking about last night. That's the divination realm when you're a false prophet, you know, in a sheep's clothing and wolf's clothing. That's an unsubmitted heart, you know, before the Lord. So we're talking about three parts is what we're going to practice soon. The first part is the revelation. What is God saying? The second is the interpretation. Ask God to reveal to you what does the revelation mean. And third is the application. So now I'm going to talk to you about two ways mostly. There's other ways like we just said, smell, taste, hear. Most people flow. There's a knobby flow is what they call it. It means to bubble up, spontaneously flow from the river of God. You have an abundance of words. You just open your mouth and say, no, I'm going to prophesy to that man behind the counter. And when I open my mouth, God's going to fill it and just say, hey, um, sometimes the Lord shares things with me about people. Can I share what he's put on my heart for you? And most of the time people will say yes. Every once in a while you'll get a no. But open your mouth and then it'll come. It'll bubble up. You'll start, like when me and Christine the other two weeks ago, was two weeks ago when we prophesied, most of that was Navi, not all of it. Some of it we saw things, but you just flow. You just don't get in your head. The more you flow, the stronger your prophetic gift will be because you're not, oh, am I missing it? Am I afraid? Am I intimidated? No, you just got to flow. And when you release that flow and that river, then you don't have to worry about missing it because you're in God's stream. You're getting the revelation from your spirit. You're not getting it. You're not going to get it from your head anyway. So when you get in your head, you actually hinder the prophetic gift inside of you because it comes from your spirit, man. Like reiterating what like Christine was talking about last night, it's straight from your spirit. It's not, oh, did I get this right? Did I get this right? All you're doing is slowing your prophetic a growth down by, you know, you're in safe place here to practice. You have a, a pastor that, that honors the prophetic and allows you to make mistakes. And we're going to talk about what we can do with, with prophetic words, but let's also talk about, um, there's the Nabi flow, which bubbles up and there's the Ruah, which means seer. You have the ability to see every child has the gift to see. Now there is seer prophets and we'll talk about that later, but you may see a lot when you're prophesying. Some, I switch back and forth. Some days I just open my mouth and he fills it, and then sometimes I go to prophesy and I start seeing all these things. So my husband, uh, he does both, I think. What would you say, seer or Nobby? How do you flow best? Both? Both, yeah. I've seen it. Some, some days he'll open his mouth and just let God say what he wants to say, and then sometimes he sees videos go before his mind. So you may see a little video like a movie screen, and that's God showing you something prophetically to release. Any questions about that? It's, it's spelled R-O-E-H, Ruah. Another name, everybody doesn't like the name, but it's basically mystic. It means seer. People don't like the word mystic, but it may, I mean, seers in the Bible. David consulted seers, Gad. Um, and we'll talk more about see your prophets, but everybody has a right to see in the spirit realm as a child of God. You just have to practice it. What does he want to show you in the spirit? Ask him. Ask him all these things. Um, you can do like a, one of the things I did in when we were in supernatural school was just ask for a revelation, interpretation, application for a family member, call them up and release it. I mean, how bad do you want to grow? It takes time. It takes, it's like riding a bike. The more you prophesy, the more you practice getting the revelation, the more you practice the interpretation and application, the more it'll come because you're stewarding the gift. And any gift, whether it's healing, words of knowledge, revelation, whatever it is that's coming out, the more you steward it, the more God's going to give you because you become a funnel then. It's not about take, 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 take. It becomes a funnel where you just flow into the gifts of God. Um, let's see. But God, I want to talk about visions. I don't want to forget that. How many have visions in here already? Dreams. How many have dreams? That's another way of hearing from God. You can prophesy out of that if you feel led. You just have to follow the Holy Spirit. Like nothing's written in stone about anything. You have to follow God. And that's what's so great about um, just the gift of the prophetic. Now, I will recommend if you're a high feeler, like the last one we did, Touch. James Gall has a book on the feeler. And you may feel, prophetic people can feel atmospheres. How many of you went to a region and felt like fear everywhere? 
or hatred everywhere or whatever it is. So we have a lot of feelers in the room. So that can go into the prophetic too. But I just want you to be aware there's a part of stewarding your feeler gift as well. We can't submit under that atmosphere. We have to get into worship. We have to. We're really sensitive as prophetic people. So if you relate to the feeler, I just want to make sure to, re to give you that resource because that can be hard to grow in. But we're here in community so you can connect. You can ask questions. We're going to have a panel at the end of this teaching where you can just ask questions, whether it's on your filler gift or anything on the prophetic or prophet or whatever it is. But I just want you to know that as you're activating, you may feel more. So just ask God, what am I feeling and why am I feeling it? I want to teach you a few protocols when releasing prophetic words because I know some of you may go to other churches. You may, you know, come here to visit three times a month, four times a month, but I would be doing you an injustice if I didn't teach you any protocols about the prophetic. So number one um, protocol for the prophetic is prophesy out of love. Don't get mad at somebody, get bitter at somebody, and then go prophesy to them, please. <laughs> we need to have our heart right. We need to be, and, and things happen. Let's be real here. People get offended. We don't want that. We have to repent, bind up our wounds, go get healed, and then go back out and prophesy some more. Hopefully you're getting at the point where the times you get offense gets less and less and less, but we don't want to prophesy when we're like way exhausted, way hangry, need to eat right then. How do you know that might not be the best time to release prophetic words to people? You know, because you're speaking on behalf of God. So some of this is common sense. But how many know also, how many have seen this happen? Don't compare your words to anybody else. We're all in different stages of growth. We're not in competition. This is about the kingdom. And we need to honor and, and submit to one another in our growth processes before the Lord. So the first protocol would be prophesy out of love if you're writing this down. Second one is don't compare yourself. Love yourself in the process of growing. God needs your voice. It's worth the growth. It's worth not comparing yourself and, and to steward what you have. Number three that I've seen is don't be paralyzed by fear. I've heard people say, well, I don't want to be prophesying because what, what if I miss it or what if I'm wrong? Then you're human. So you can't be paralyzed by fear. We'll talk about judging your words at the end of this, but realize, like I said, a false prophet is the source. Most false prophets that I've ever seen have been extremely accurate, so I don't think you have to worry about that <laughs> right off the bat. I mean, how many, have you ever seen a uh, false prophet that wasn't very accurate? Yeah. They're usually right, they're flowing out of divination, they're flowing out of the wrong source, so they're really accurate. So you growing is not being a false prophet, so don't give in to fear, don't give in to intimidation, fear of man. You're growing, and this is a safe place to grow. The fourth part, I just wanted to say, test your words. Even today, test your words. It's okay if you missed it, you're growing. Just tell God, I don't receive that word. It didn't bear witness with my spirit. So I'm going to go over four things to test your word. I would be doing you an injustice if I didn't teach you how to test your prophetic words. And here's a few guidelines. But all you really got to do is ask God, you know, was that from you, Lord? No? Okay, I flush it. I cut that off. If you just cut it off, ask God to cut it off. I don't receive that. So does it line up with Scripture? Number one, that's how you test the word. Does it line up with scripture? Or is it, they prophesy in anti-biblical things. I've seen some crazy stuff out there. Y'all would be surprised. <laughs> people that have come in and, and they haven't got the stuff that Christine, thank God she broke some of that last night, but people come in with divination or warlocks, whatever it is, and start prophesying and, and pretend to be prophets. I mean, this stuff happens. I've seen some crazy stuff. So does it line up with the nature of God? If it's hatred, if the fruit of it doesn't sound right, if it sounds bitter or angry, you might want to ask, is that word really from God? Does that word give me peace and bear witness to my spirit, man? If you get a, like, you want to throw up when you get a word? No, Lord, I don't receive that. Sometimes I'll say to people, I don't receive that. I bless you, and I know we don't like to offend people, but we also have to be careful what people speak in our lives. And this, is, this isn't a place of fear. This is just wisdom. 
I mean, I seen the Holy Spirit moving, so you guys were flowing well and releasing. I could tell the Holy Spirit was touching and the breath of God was on it. But when you don't feel that breath and wind and you feel like you want to throw up, it's like, nope, I cut every part of that word off of me because demons are assigned to bad words. The good words, angels and Holy Spirit's assigned to. So we have to remember this is the kingdom clash in the environment of the true prophetic and the false. Um, if you if you still don't know and you're confused about a prophetic word, another protocol could be how does God feel about it? Take time to pray on it and ask family or close friends. How many love iron sharpens iron? You know, if you have a word that you're in the middle about and you can't get clarity, ask a friend. That's why we're in the body. That's why we have a safe place to go and practice that, prophesy to each other. Um, if it doesn't feel right, like I said, flush it. And most of the time, today, I could see Holy Spirit moving. It was right. You know, God was moving, and you need to expect that. But I also want to give you the wisdom to say, you know, that, that person prophesied this to me two years ago, and it messed me up. Um, I was going to let my husband, can you make it about three minutes or so, share a testimony. Just to, I just like to be real. So I wanted him to share a testimony of how he discerned to flush his word. And what happened to him in the process of that? For some men, we're longer talkers than our wives. <laughs> That's what I've been told. Anyhow, <laughs> I'm a detail person, and that fits, you know, as a seer, you know, those who can see things and you want to describe things. It's John the Revelator, and I saw from a heaven coming down, and there was five posts, and anyhow, you get the picture, you know. And so uh, we had a, a prophet that had come to the local church several years ago, and uh, he came, and he was very accurate. I called the, pre the past, the present, and then we would call it the future. And so he was giving me words about my past, and then he was also giving some words of encouragement about my present. And then he said these words to me. He said, um, by the way, the Lord is going to take away your feeler gift of feeling people's pain for a divine healing in their bodies. And at that point in time, I listened to it, and I said, whoa, wait a minute here, honey. I mean, God, you know how much insecurity? <laughs> yeah, really, honey. <laughs> wait a minute here, God. I don't know if I agree with that because I, I, I was still dealing with doubt, unbelief, discouragement, and God using me and things in that nature and uh, for seven year period. And I said, God, you know, you know, my left hand occasionally gets a little warm in the middle. It was kind of like I call my pacifier. So when God actually I, I requested him, if you make my hand, the left hand side a little warm, then I kind of sort of if kind of could have, would have, should have. He just might use me to pray for somebody for healing. And that was the level I was at. Not where I'm at today, but where I was at. So. He got done. I went home. I said, God, I don't understand it. And then I, and I sought counsel of the local church. And uh, one minister said, well, you know what? You got so comfortable in the gift that you have in feeling people's pain, right ankle, left ankles. You know, the young lady last night, I was praying over her back, her right shoulder, all this stuff. Like, how do you know this? And I'm like, uh, well, God knows everything about you. And I said, you know, I said, if you take all that away, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to pray for people if I don't feel the pain. Yes, I can have a word of knowledge. You can feel it, see it, say it, read it, picture and picture and all this other good stuff that I'll teach. And then you got on stage. And then, well, before then, I got home and I cried the next morning. And I wept in my bed. I said, God, I can't do this. That man's a prophet. And this is going to happen to me. And I'm not comfortable. And I got up, went through the day and everything, and then the next day I still got up again. I will make it short, dear. And I, again, I was crying. I was weeping before the Lord. I said, God, this, th th I don't know what I'm going to do because this coming weekend I'm going to have to get up with the ministry we're in and call out words of knowledge. That's how he activated you. At like end of this, he took the whole group to another church, and you stood in front of him, and you got words of knowledge about people's uh, sickness and, and conditions and such. And I'm like, Lord, that's my sweet spot. And, uh, again, so it, he didn't say anything. It got you into fear. It got me into fear, uh, more fear, anxiety, stress. And the next morning, third day, I got up. I said, Lord, I, I don't understand this. And I heard him speak to me. 
Well, this is what I would say. If you don't like the word, please ask Holy Spirit. Keep pressing in. And I did have a senior season minister said, well, you know what? God is just want to test you that regardless if you feel anything, will you still pray for people? And I'm like, eh, I hear what you're saying, but I'm not there yet. I'm still the wimpy Richard over here. I need a little assurance over here. And so uh, I'm going to be honest with you. And so the Holy Spirit said to me, his words is, uh, do you believe those words? I said, well, you know what he said, right, Lord, just in case we're having a communication issue. Uh, and this is how I am. This is how I talk. I'm real. And people say, you talk like that? God did that way? Said, Absolutely. He already knows your heart. If you're not going to know it, he, he's going to say, hey. And so I just sat there. I said, what do you mean? And here's the question. I uh, learned this one thing. What do you mean, Lord? He said, are you going to take that word? And I said to myself, I have a choice. I have a choice. I said, Lord, Holy Spirit, you're telling me I have a choice to believe the word from this man or I can reject it and continue this coming weekend. And you know what? I said, thank you, Jesus. And I don't know about persistency and being hungry, but when I got up and everything there, the minister who was there, I think April was there, to be honest with you, I, I, freaking got, out. I was freaking out. Well, not only that, <laughs> Let's the be honest. seasoned minister who has the gift of healing took two of my words of knowledge. I'm like, please stop. You're going to take every single one of them. I have to go yeah. fishing again for and another word of knowledge. And I you and said what? What did I say? I don't you remember. I just, he was freaking out because of that prophetic word. And I knew what the word was. I knew it wasn't God. And da, da, da. And he's like, I'm going to have to give a word. And I don't know a word. Da, da, da. I'm like, Exactly. <laughs> this is what you walk in. Yeah. Release it. Yes. Boom, he shifted. I have it. And so the man came up. It was, right, it was his right knee. And on Monday, he was scheduled to have surgery and operate on his knee. And what he said to me was this. He goes, uh, yep, that's me, all right. He goes, I want you to pray for my knee. Don't worry. I have surgery tomorrow if God doesn't heal me by your prayers. <laughs> I'm like, I'm on the back row again. Lord Jesus, why did he say this to me? Because that's a lot of pressure. And I just heard Holy Spirit said, I got this. He canceled his appointment because supernaturally healed him. So. Yeah. so anyway, that's just a real testimony about testing your words and how important it is. See, he got into fear. If you get into fear right after word, it might not be from the Lord. <laughs> you might want to cut that off and you just pray and say, Lord, I just ask you to bind every spirit associated with that word and cut it off of me in Jesus name. All right. I know I got to hurry. I got some more activations. <laughs> I better hurry and get this out. Um, I will say if your if your church does not allow prophecy, and I know this happens, different churches have different protocols for prophecy. So if your house does allow it, find out what they are because what you're practicing today, you may be able to do in your church. Just find out what the protocol is. And if they don't allow prophecy at all, I'm just being real. You may want to pray and ask if God, if that's where God wants you to stay. Because the prophetic is the life of the church. The church is found on apostles and prophets. And if they don't allow the prophetic, you're only going to go but so far. Because the staleness comes in when you don't have the prophetic. I've seen it happen, unfortunately. Um, when I was moving in... <laughs> wanting to understand more about the prophetic and what it was to prophesy. God called me out of a church, and I was a leader there. I taught Sunday school to the adults, and I loved it. They let me teach prophetically. They let me teach whatever the word of God was, and I grieved and cried when God called me out of there because I was comfortable. God's like, no, I want you to grow in the prophetic. And I'm like, oh, man, I love this place. I get to teach. It's, you know, it was like family. But how many know God's first? <laughs> um, I just wanted to add that in there. So just pray. Is this where I'm supposed to stay? I don't want my growth and my maturity to be stunted in this season. Um, number six, and I'll, I'll go faster. Don't argue about a prophetic word. If you release it, somebody doesn't receive it, oh, well. It's not worth it. I've seen people argue because you can't let your pride and your arrogance. I've seen really good words get flushed, and they were from God. But everybody has their own personal right to judge the word. I've seen bad things happen out of that. 
because they should have listened to the word, but that's not your responsibility. Your only responsibility is release the word. Their job, and once it's done, it's done. And you can't get offended. You can't get in your flesh. The enemy would love for you to get offended and quit prophesying. Well, they didn't receive my word. Oh, well, go prophesy to the next one. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Release the word, number seven, even if you don't understand. I kind of talked about that er earlier. Even if it's really weird. Um, I had a word, this goes into word of knowledge with the prophetic, but it, we were on school of ministry. I had to prophesy to the team that we all had to prophesy and release the word of knowledge. So I had the word of knowledge of uh, pain jumping all over somebody's body. Well, she got up there to get prayer. It was a demonic. It was a demon that needed to come out. And then I started prophesying over her. And the next thing I know, as I was prophesying, sometimes God will call you to deliver the person. Like all the gifts flow together. So God may have you kick a demon out, you know, whatever the Holy Spirit wants, right? So as I was going to prophesy, the Lord had me say, I just break every generational curse of premature death off your bloodline. Well, the lady starts crying in front of me bawling. I'm like, Oh God, what I do? You know, I'm in ministry school. She's like bawling in front of me and I'm releasing healing and she's bawling. And she said, Lord just gave me an open vision. And the Lord already showed me that Satan wanted to take my three-year-old granddaughter. But since she broke that curse off, the Lord showed me her being rescued and that that assignment was canceled. So sometimes I'm just saying you'll flow with the prophetic and other gifts will come out with it. Trust the Lord. Even if you're new at it, you have the same, there's no junior Holy Spirit. The kingdom comes, like with what Christine was preaching last night. It's the kingdom clash. You just flow with the kingdom. Whatever the kingdom's doing, if it's mixed with the prophetic, do it. If it's healing, do it. Word of knowledge, do it. Um, be cautious. I would I'd like to add this one in here because I've seen it cause people pain. Be cautious about prophesying mates to people. I mean, sometimes you will know that you know, but I have seen people abuse this. I had a friend. We're no longer friends, but that's okay. Sometimes the Lord just gets people out of your life. But like five people prophesied this was going to be their mate. This was going to be their mate because they knew her desire. They were prophesying out of the soul. And she got mad at me because she's like, well, why won't you prophesy me this? I said, I don't feel anything on that, and I can't. Before God, I stand in the fear of the Lord, and I'm not going to prophesy knowingly something he has not given me. Now, like, I'm human. I make mis I made mistakes and do make mistakes in prophesying because I'm human. But it's not like I purposefully would do it. But that I knew was not from the Lord, and, and it departed our friendship. And I was like, well, it is what it is. But you don't want to have seen people cry and be devastated when they didn't marry that mate because now they think, I didn't marry my soulmate. Eight people prophesied this, and it never was God. So I just I say not that you can't do it, but just be cautious. Just know that you know when you're releasing a word about a mate. Um, I'm sure you've probably seen that happen, devastating things happen. Like we just declare that we're all accurate, and, and uh, but we don't make a choice to constantly prophesy mates, but we can be accurate in all the other areas, right? <laughs> Um, another thing I would say, number nine, don't touch someone when you're prophesying unless you ask. A lot of people have gotten triggered by this because they've had trauma, they've had abuse, um, they've been in harmful situations, and they won't receive the prophetic if you touch them first. It just really, I've seen it be very negative. So you just have to know where people are at. And we'd like to say we were in a great world where nobody's experienced trauma. But if they say yes, you know, that's great. Just flow, just honoring them. And the last thing I'd like to throw in is do not prostitute the gift. As you grow in the prophetic, I've seen people go to churches just to prophesy for money. I've seen people charge crazy amounts for a prophetic word. I would say don't charge for a prophetic word. That's just my throne room, fear of the Lord. People sow into prophetic words. Now, that's different. That's voluntarily of your heart. But I get very cautious when people are making money off a gift of God and just prostituting it to, to get rich. I've seen it. I've seen people abuse that. Um, I'm sure you've seen it, seen it as well, yeah. Um, we'll teach a whole nother class about uh, words of knowledge and words of wisdom, but I want to at least touch base before we do some more practicing and activations because um, I know some of you guys are taking notes. The word of knowledge is usually past or present tense. 
it promotes faith. So it can be used for healing. It can be used, uh, I see you riding a bike. The Lord's saying this. So think about how this applies for the prophetic. The word of knowledge is usually past and present tense. Like in John 1, 43 to 50, Jesus seen Nathaniel under the fig tree. That was the word of knowledge. So these things are happening. Like earlier, some of you guys were flowing in it. But I just want you to know you already were flowing in the word of knowledge. Word of wisdom is usually a future event. Acts 19. Acts 9, 15, like Adonias had the faith when Jesus gave him wisdom to go and minister to Paul. How many know that Adonias did not want to go minister to Paul? He knew Paul was killing Christians. And it's like, nope, you got to go. Jesus gave him wisdom. He's like, okay, then I will go and minister to Paul. And Paul got his sight back. Now, let's get back to some more activations. Um... A few things before we dive into those. I just want to touch base really quick. How do I grow in the prophetic? Practice, 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 like riding a bike. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. These things that I'm teaching you today, keep doing it. Do not bow to intimidation. How many know Satan hates prophetic words? He hates the prophetic because it exhorts God and it's God's voice. Be in a prophetic community. That helps a lot. Then you're in community with a bunch of weird people like you. <laughs> and you can even flow even better with a bunch of people like you, right? And also, obviously, I'm tr preaching to the choir because you're doing training on the prophetic. To grow in the prophetic, training really helps. So whenever Jody or the church has these come, you will grow. You will go deeper into the things of God. All right, let's dive into some more. Now that I've primed your pump, got you activated, let's go for some little little bit harder prophetic activations. <laughs> this is here to stretch you, I promise. But it's a good thing. <laughs> All right. Um, this one's kind of in the middle, so it's not too, too bad. So I want you to get with your partner and ask the Lord to show you what character in the Bible do they most represent and why God is showing you this. So just, I will take about six minutes. I don't want to take too much time because the more you activate, the, the more you'll grow. So why, what character in the Bible are they most like and why God is, God is showing you this for this season? Lord, revelation, interpretation, application. God may show you a picture of a character in Bible. You may hear a picture. You may see a picture. You may just know, and you're knower.
doing good. Two more minutes. Are we going to be done? Uh, probably be 4.30 with this session so we can do some more activations. We might just do less worship next time. We got about one more minute. You're doing good. I like how you guys are flowing. Bow through. Oh, I like that. Hallelujah. That's all right. That's awesome. That can happen. All right, all right. We're going to go to the second activation just to make sure you guys have enough time <laughs> to do some more. How was it, guys? How was that first activation? A little bit harder than the other ones? Good. Okay. And I'm going to stretch you some more. <laughs> time to stretch some more. I want you, this time, I want you to practice when you prophesy three different things, something from the past, something from the present, and something from the future. 
So I want you to ask God three things, past, present, and future, whatever topic, subject, doesn't matter um, for the person. And whoever started first last time, just reverse it. Some of y'all, if you like to pray in the spirit, to stir it up, you don't have to be quiet. Feel free to pray in the spirit if you want to, to just stir up the gift inside of you. give you an example without a help okay I was picking that up so let's just let, let me just pick on Christine here in times past I'm just gonna just flow in times past I see even as a small child you had some misunderstanding when you were small because you were wired so differently because God created you in the mother's womb to be a prophet and so things sometimes seem different in that process of when you were growing, but you always knew you were created differently. And now you're stepping into some of the fullness as a prophet that God has called you. And in the future, God is going to use you mightily because you've surrendered your life and you've laid it down. You're going to train and equip prophets, and the impact is going to even impact nations, says the Lord. Past, present, and future. That makes, does that make more sense? words in times past now and in the future
glad you guys find that one. A little bit harder? A little bit more challenging? Stretching you, making you grow here? Yay! <laughs> uh, now I want to t help you stretch even more. <laughs> so this one, I want you to try to get something that your partner that you're prophesying with is going to be doing in six months. So let's try to do a time frame. Six months. So just ask the Lord to show you what are they going to be doing in six months. Because we got to practice and we got to stretch you. And we'll get about five minutes to do that one as well. Everybody done? Do you still need a par Did your partner leave? Oh, she had to go to the restroom. Okay. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. I'll give a few more minutes.
right, how many was that stretching? Good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it getting easier the more you're doing it? No? A little challenging still? That's all right. You're practicing. Remember, practice, 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 practice. And then practice some more. <laughs> so this is our last one, and this is my favorite one. You want to know why? Because this gets you out of your mind. You've got to flow from your spirit. You have to flow for your spirit. So those of you that have a cell phone, get out your timer on your phone. And then set the timer for five minutes. Well, I'm trying to think about a time frame. Let me cut that down for you. I'll make it a little easier. Let's do three minutes. Three minutes. You'll have three minutes each on your timer. And I want you to prophesy for three minutes straight. And that way you just get out of your head and you prophesy for three minutes straight. You'll, you just allow faith to rise up. And allow your spirit man to flow. Just not be flow. Just release it. Don't think about it. Just start flowing in the spirit. Open your mouth and he will fill it. So take three minutes and uh, let the opposite person go first. And sometimes I know you take a 10-second break. I get it. You know, if you've got to take a 10-second break, but the Lord will keep giving you. I'm just showing you, don't cap yourself. You're going to learn in this exercise, don't cap yourself. As long as you press in, God will keep giving you. Um, I know people that have did 10,000 hours, and this is how they grow. They, they set the timer, and, and they're required by leadership in the prophetic training to do 10 minutes prophecies with a group of people. So this will help you grow. So go ahead and do three minutes straight and just give it all you got. <laughs> and then we'll take a break. <laughs> Open your mouth and he will fill it. If you get in your head, it'll mess your word up. Just flow in the spirit. Flow in the spirit. One, two, three, go.
All right. How much time or do we have left? Anybody? Still going? Three seconds? Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll let a few of you guys that are still working um, just keep on flowing. Just ignore me. But for you guys that are done, how how well, did that surprise you that God just flowed inside of you? How exciting is that to realize you have more to offer than what you realize because you have the Holy Ghost inside of you. So I'm excited. So keep practicing, right? Keep practicing. you got more in you than you even know. You have a whole river attached to the throne of God to pour out to the world. <laughs> well, I just want some of you guys already know. I just wanted to share the two books um, we have for sale if you're interested. This one is like a prophetic um, spirit of prophecy about my life. It's where God healed me of uh, fibromyalgia. I was bedridden and um, the process that I had trauma in my life that God had to get out. And the testimony of Jesus Christ and how he healed me. Um, it's called Gateway to My Miracle. And the second one is the Chronicles of a Discerner. If you want to grow in the gifts of the spiritual gifts and you want to, I wrote it like a mentor. Like if you had somebody in your living room because I wanted something easy for people to grab and be mentored in the relationship with the Holy Spirit. So most people who read this said they've gotten closer with the Holy Spirit plus closer to their giftings because I teach you how to rely on the Holy Spirit to grow in the gift of discerning. So those two are back there. And um, we may share some testimonies later on after G after Richard um, almost said Jesus. I can tell Jesus is on my mind. <laughs> it's after my husband speaks, um, we may share some testimonies from this class. But we want to take a 10-minute break, 12 minutes, something like that, and let you get a snack. We're going to bring some snacks out and let you go outside, use the restroom before we do the next class. Mm -hmm. 